gathered as usual for their morning meeting. Everyone grew quiet as the dispatcher began to give out the jobs for the day. On this day, however, there was less work than usual. You mean we could have the day off? asked Poduck. Now it is a rare day when the tugs aren't needed, but it does happen. No tugs are required at the moment, said the dispatcher. But I will need someone to work all night tonight on the night shift. The dispatcher looked directly at Emily and George. Any volunteers? he said. I'd like to, began George. But I have an appointment to have my oil changed. Emily also had to say no. Tonight, I'm getting a new tow rope. Theodore had never worked the night shift before. That job always seemed to go to the bigger tugs. He had always thought that staying up all night to work the night shift would be fun and exciting. Well, maybe this is my chance, he thought as he floated forward. I'll work the night shift, sir, he said. Thank you, Theodore, said the dispatcher. But I don't think you're strong enough yet to move Owen the oil rig across the harbor. So that's the job for tonight, thought Theodore. It made sense to move the giant oil rig at night when few ships would be crossing the harbor. And Theodore knew the dispatcher was right. He couldn't do it by himself. Hank moved forward. I could help, he said. The dispatcher looked thoughtful for a moment. Will the dispatcher really let us do the job? Wondered the two smallest tugs. Very well, said the dispatcher. Hank and Theodore will work the night shift. Hank and Theodore were so thrilled, they couldn't help but toot their whistles. Let me give you some good advice, said Foduck. Try and get a good afternoon nap. Oh, we will, said Hank and Theodore together. Well, they tried to sleep, but it wasn't easy. As usual, the harbor was very busy and very noisy. Hank, said Theodore, are you awake? I'm awake, replied Hank. Are you awake? I wonder what it's like on the night shift, Hank asked Theodore. Will we be all alone? Will it be too dark to see? I don't know, said Theodore, but I have a question. Well, what's that? asked Hank. How can anyone sleep during the day, said Theodore. At that moment, Northumberland's submarine floated slowly by the dock. Hi, Northumberland, called Theodore. Oh, hello there, Theodore. How are you? How are you? Well, the tugs knew Northumberland was a very sleepy submarine. But this time, he had fallen fast asleep right in the middle of a sentence. Northumberland is the sleepiest ship I've ever seen, said Hank. At least someone can sleep during the day, smiled Theodore. And both tugs laughed. That evening, as the sun set and the light changed from gold to orange to dark blue, the two tugs sailed out to meet Owen the oil rig. They passed Philip and Fillmore, the ferry twins, as they finished their last trip of the day. They met Rebecca, the research vessel, heading home for the night. Theodore and I are working the night shift, called Hank proudly. Watch out for shooting stars, called Rebecca as she settled into her dock. Shooting stars, said Hank. I hope they don't land on us. I don't think shooting stars are dangerous, said Theodore laughing. As the darkness deepened, Theodore and Hank began to notice a change in the harbor. It sure is quiet, said Hank. And dark, added Theodore. Owen should be around here somewhere. Uh, Owen, called Hank, but his voice was barely a whisper. And there was no reply. How are we ever going to move an oil rig in the dark, said Theodore. He was beginning to worry. Maybe they weren't ready for the night shift. Hank called a bit louder. Owen! The sound seemed to echo all around the harbor. Now both tugs began to get nervous. Hadn't the dispatcher said they would find Owen here? Suddenly, the lights of the great oil rig snapped on. Hello, boys! 
called Owen in a cheerful voice. I'm all set. Let's get moving. At least now we won't have any trouble seeing, said Theodore, who was dazzled by Owen's bright lights. The two tugs buttoned their tow ropes onto Owen and slowly began to move the oil rig across the harbor. I think I can see why the dispatcher wanted Owen moved at night, said Theodore as he strained at his tow rope. Of course, said Owen. It's because I take up so much room. You would block the ferry boat, said Hank. And all the other ships, added Theodore. But at night, the harbor's empty. Well, almost empty, said Owen. There's probably more going on than you think. Do you like working at night? Hank asked Owen. I love it, boomed Owen in a loud voice. It's so peaceful and quiet. You can hear the waves lapping against the shore, shouted Owen. But all I can hear is Owen, whispered Theodore to Hank. And they both smiled. Well, by the end of the trip, the two tugs were very tired. Owen was the heaviest thing they'd ever pulled. And Owen was grateful. Thanks, boys, he shouted. Now why don't you go off and see the sights? I think you'll find things seem a bit different at night. Okay, Owen, said Theodore. We will. And the two tugs headed off on their own. See the sights, said Hank. What can we see at night? The stars, for one thing, answered Theodore, gazing at the sky. I've never seen so many stars, said Hank. I bet there must be two stars for every fish in the ocean, said Theodore. What was that, said Hank. That, said Theodore in amazement, was a shooting star. As the two tugs continued to stare happily up at the night sky, they didn't notice the water around them begin to swell and swirl. Hey, cried Hank suddenly. Why is the water so churned up? Well, there's no storm, said Theodore. The sky is still clear. The rough water grew smooth once more. The two tugs were puzzled and they felt a bit uneasy. But Theodore, where did those big waves come from? asked Hank. There are no ships out here except us, said Theodore. Then they saw it. It was like a shadow moving silently in the dark. See it, Theodore? whispered Hank. I saw something, said Theodore. But I don't know what. After seeing that strange shadow, the night felt colder, and the light of the stars seemed distant, strange. Theodore and Hank turned and rushed back to Owen. The tugs were eager to tell Owen about the mysterious shadow loose in the harbor. It made waves so big I thought there was a storm, said Hank. And then it just disappeared, added Theodore. Well, as Owen listened to their story, he started to smile. And then he laughed. Yeah, sometimes things look a little different on the night shift, he told them. But I don't think you have to worry. Theodore and Hank found Owen's words a bit strange, but they did feel better under the lights of the giant oil rig. Well, maybe the shadow had only been a dream. It's not long until dawn, boys, said Owen. I guess you'll be getting back to your dock now. Thanks again. You did a fine job. Theodore and Hank said goodbye to Owen and headed for home. Owen's words of thanks cut through the chill air and warmed the tugs from the inside out. They still felt sore and tired, but they were proud of the big job they'd done. Do you think maybe we fell asleep and dreamed about the shadow? Hank asked Theodore. Maybe, said Theodore. But I've never heard of two tugs having the same dream at the same time before. They were so tired that it took a few moments for them to notice the change in the water around them. Theodore, shouted Hank. It's happening again. Quick, this way, said Theodore. And the two tugs turned and sailed off. They were in such a rush they almost ran aground against the cargo sheds. As they turned around, they saw Trapped, said Hank. Hank, 
said Theodore. Look! I can't, said Hank, and he waited for the worst. But nothing happened. Then Hank heard Theodore say, You... you look... you look different. Hank wondered who Theodore was talking to, so he opened his eyes. And there was Northumberland Submarine. Theodore and Hank stared at the submarine floating in front of them. He did look different. He was wide awake. Hello, Hank. Theodore, said Northumberland Submarine. I heard you were working the night shift. Isn't it a beautiful night? The tugs were so happy to discover their mystery shadow was a friend that they laughed and, and shouted and, and raced their engines until several voices called from the shore. Keep it down! We're trying to sleep! But you don't seem so... so... Theodore struggled for the right word. Sleepy, said Hank. Northumberland laughed. I know, I know, he said. But you must remember, I do most of my work in the dark. So, what have you two been up to? Theodore and Hank proudly told Northumberland about their first night shift. But we need some sleep now, said Theodore. Well, you can't sleep yet, said the submarine. Oh, no, you'll miss the best part of the night. What's that? asked Hank. I'll show you, said Northumberland. Follow me. And they all sailed off together to watch the sunrise over the big harbor. Wow, said Hank, as he watched the colors flood the horizon. It's even better than the sunset. It's wonderful. Northumberland was right. Watching the sunrise was the best part of the night shift.